Soldiers, welcome to the Scout Regiment, and thank you for joining us as always. Attack on Titan is one of the most popular anime of the 21st century, a wartime political thriller steeped with incredible plotting and dialogue, but today we'll be looking at where the real war begins. When Hajime Isayama put sick pen to dope paper in 2009, I wonder if he knew that the manga he was creating would become one of the most impactful, refreshing, and controversial anti-manga franchises of all time. A wartime political thriller that quickly reveals itself as a flesh mecha manga before revealing itself again as a completely insane shonen anime. All supported by a complex game of espionage, royal lineage, and a few more elements that I don't understand yet and one of the most well-written casts I've ever encountered. All the way from Rugrats reject Connie to humanity's strongest soldier, and even the suicidal blockhead that changes the whole war. I don't care for Eren. Isayama got a lot right with Attack on Titan. The titular titans are insanely iconic. The plot, as I will be poorly demonstrating in this video, is incredibly gripping. And the art is really special. I read the physical manga for Attack on Titan, and there's something about the texture of a paperback volume that really enhances the rough, sketchy style that Isayama uses. The heavily lined art style not only sends you careening towards titans at such speeds, but Isayama uses his rough style in much more subtle ways as well. While our main characters typically take the focus of whatever panel, I mean, obviously, who wouldn't want to look at Captain Levi? Scout Regiment is full of bad hoes. Lesser or unnamed soldiers in the background of panels will already have their faces scratched out, already dead to the world in this war of men and monsters. I am not an artist, however, unless you consider pinning mercy mains like a fly to the wall with javelin to be an art, which I do. I consider myself to be a storyteller, or at least someone who reacts to storytelling, and today we have to talk about one of the most impressively plotted stretches of storytelling I have ever read. In the past, I would have preferred to make a review video of the arcs leading up to what I'll be talking about today, and I would still be down to look back at them at some point. But this is my channel and my life, damn it! I get to talk about whatever I want to talk about, as long as it aligns with YouTube's ad suitability policies. So where does the real war begin? That hurts me. It really does. The way you're looking at me now. If I didn't know better, I'd say you didn't trust me. Hey, Armin. Now here's the thing. I love all of the Attack on Titan characters equally. I don't care for Joe. A lot of shonen series is kinda live and die on their main character. If you just don't like Deku, my hero probably isn't gonna be for you. While in most shonen, the orbit of the universe does kinda center around your Naruto, your Asta, Attack on Titan is a bit more natural. Eren is only in the story when he actually should be, and since Isayama, at least from what I've read so far, is committed to making this a story about a larger world and not just Eren, He's gone for decent stretches of it. Thankfully. Look, I know a lot of guys love Aaron Yeager, and when they finish middle school, I really do hope that they can come back and appreciate this video. Now granted, as I've said already, I have not finished Attack on Titan, so maybe by the end of the story I will like Aaron a bit more. Maybe. Probably not. I know things. But luckily, Attack on Titan has an extremely deep bench of well-written characters, from our main scout regiment team to the commanders that lead them. Man, this shit's good. Someone's gotta tell people about this Attack on Titan series. It's gonna blow up real soon. In the first couple arcs of Attack on Titan, things are as straightforward as they're gonna get. We've got humans fighting titans. Easy peasy. The real war of Attack on Titan begins when we can no longer even trust the soldiers next to us not to be the same titans we're fighting against. No choice but to face what I've done. As a warrior. No road left but the one that leads to the end. Reiner, right now, 
Here? We're doing this? Yes. Right here, right now. We settle this once and for all! From the knight that would turn the scouts into true enemies of the state to Commander Ervin's incredible gamble for his life, Volumes 8 through 15 of Attack on Titan, or part of the female Titan arc through part of the Royal Uprising arc, naturally. This odd little part I'm cookie cutting out of the story has so many incredibly strong moments for even the smallest or most pitiful of characters. Connie, the Mikey of the Scout Regiment, is a hilariously sad character. His bald little baby head reminds us that these soldiers are just children. He reminisces about his hometown more than most of them, but for spite. King. You'd expect a character in a war series who talks about home this much to end up on a t-shirt, but Connie's fine. He's fine. Sasha, best friend of Potatoes and Connie alike, also has one of the most underrated character beats in the story. Sasha has the most humble beginnings of any of the scouts I've met so far, being from a small hunting village, if you could call it a village. Attack on Titan isn't really about people doing the right thing or always making the right decisions. It's about people making these decisions because of who they are, making judgments because of who they are not. Sasha joined the scouts out of anger and fear that her family's simple life of hunting would be abandoned for a future she wasn't interested in. She traded in one hunting party for another, but still hid the true twang on her voice. I'm a Kansas boy if you don't know. I grew up next to that rock from in the tall grass, that's why I'm right about everything all the time. Sasha lets her real accent out and tells a girl she's protecting from a titan to go on and get before she stabs his fucking eyes out. One of them is a long-distance stab, however. This sold me on Isayama's care for every one of his characters, even if they die horrifically, which obviously, Sasha never will. But if you want characters who are a lot less silly, but a lot more... coded? Here to ravage me? Don't take this the wrong way, but I didn't think you were all that into girls. Really? Well, since we're on the subject, I didn't think you were all that into guys. <laughs> Ymir and Historia, along with Reina and Berthold, are a fantastic pair of characters. I love the way that Attack on Titan reveals these characters who, at the beginning of the story, seemed relatively simple, as fascinating soldiers with full lives. And Isayama, in his best moments, reveals just part of the hand he's dealt for them. One of my favorite beats of the story, The Long Night at Utgard Castle, has several standout moments. There's the flashy and obviously more memorable reveal of Ymir's titan form, and smaller beats like a scout searching the castle hopelessly for a single drop of liquor are hilarious, and Shalfisiyama's often forgotten comedic chops. There are a few times where Attack on Titan just barely opens itself, like a door into a room you've never imagined could exist before slamming itself shut again. Help yourself. I can't believe there's canned food here. <clears throat> what the? Wait, what is this? I can't read a word of it. How do you know this says herring? This, uh, label. It's in another language. I wish I had a better, more articulate way to express this, but that was some of the coolest shit ever. The real war of Attack on Titan only deepens when we can't even trust the soldiers standing next to us to not only not be Titans, but to even be our fellow countrymen. Reina and Berthold are still a relative question mark for me, but I can tell you I'm really intrigued by Reina's talk about being a warrior versus a soldier with an exclamation point too. And don't get me wrong, I love our big three. It's just big me. No. My heart breaks for Armin having to dole out the bitter pill of violence, but I rip off my shirt and cheer like we won the Super Bowl when it's Mikasa Ackerman. And the real dealer of death, humanity's strongest soldier, Mikasa's little brother, Captain Levi Ackerman. See, I decided to say little brother because whether he would be younger or older, he is her little brother. Unless they're not siblings. 
I had not considered that, honestly. I didn't want to spoil myself. Levi is one of the best parts of Attack on Titan. Everyone agrees on that. Whether it be the Shonen Bros or the Gooner contingent, we all love the Pipsqueak. But what I love about Levi is that despite all the incredible, slow political writing, Levi reminds us that we're still in a dumb as hell shonen action series. I've been steeped in the ongoing conspiracy of the interior MPs, the Reeves company, and the Reeses, so when I turn the page to meet Levi's serial killer ex-roommate, Kenny the Ripper, I was delighted. You don't think of it much, but the power scaling of Attack on Titan is really well done. I mean, I don't think of it much. You probably don't think of it at all, you rube. The Titans, or Flesh Mecha if you prefer the scientific name, start intriguing enough. We know at least about the Colossal Titan, Armored, Abnormals, Normals, and of course Eren's Battle Titan. When the female Titan, presumably named by the Incel Corps, pops up, we start to see just how intelligent they can be, not to mention skills like hardening. I have also been checking under my bed for the Beast Titan every night since I met him, because Jesus, and am really excited to see the weirder Titans, like the Warhammer Titan. Man, that guy's got just reek. And the invention of a pistol able to be fired while using ODM gear is genuinely horrifying. The way a simple invention like this from Kenny's anti-personnel squad can change every fight moving forward reminds me of learning about the real history of time periods like World War I. You said what kind of gas? Well, let me grab my sandwich fixin's buster, that sounds super. One of my favorite tropes in Shonen that Attack on Titan uses fantastically is what I think of as the JV and Varsity teams. Our JV team is usually the main cast, in this case Aaron and the rest of his peers, while the Varsity team are their older mentors, allies, and sometimes even antagonists who were once in their shoes. And Hanj Zoe is the MVP of my Attack on Titan Varsity team. Their gleeful dissection of Titans and MPs alike is lovably horrific. My favorite moment from them so far is after the discovery of a colossal Titan in the walls, Hanj threatens the theocrat Wallace and comes very close to reflecting Isayama's real views on religion. She lets it go, but she honestly should have just let him go. Very poor choice of words. I've only mentioned his name once so far, but now it's time to talk about the legendary leader of the Scout Regiment. Ervin, I think, is the closest to a moral barometer we're supposed to get in the series. Please don't turn into Hitler. Please don't turn into Hitler. Ervin, while he won't budge against the truly evil forces of the world, he is not ready to judge his fellow soldiers like Commander Pixis for the violence they may or may not enact. In Attack on Titan, everyone has a reason to do the things they do, to commit the violence they commit. And when everyone has a reason, Everyone is dangerous. Like I said, I read the manga for Attack on Titan, but I don't even need to play the audio of this clip. I know that J. Michael Tatum's voice is ringing through the ears of anyone with a soul. Attack on Titan does have some great dub voices. Of course, Matthew Mercer as Levi, and I particularly like Clifford Chapin as my beloved Connie, but I'm sorry, Mr. Pappenbrook. I greatly prefer your work as Inosuke. Let me demonstrate what else I'm capable of! <laughs> yeah, that's the stuff. I don't really like Eren so far. I don't know if I've mentioned that yet. But the good thing is, I don't really think I'm supposed to. Attack on Titan is full of pieces of absolute human garbage, and Eren is far from the stinkiest piece of that garbage. But what I absolutely love Attack on Titan for, besides the art, setting, fight progression, and above all characters, is the way the story progresses and changes. When the series starts, you think you're in one war, but you have no clue where the real war begins. Are you the prey, or are you the hunter? Burning desire? You can't extinguish. Either way, Attack on Titan has been one of my favorite reading experiences of the past couple years, and I can't wait to read more of it, but more so, actually, that's a lie, I would rather read it than do work, but I am excited to talk about it. However, that is the video for this week, folks. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.
Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching that video. If you made it to this point, a special double thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, that was a, uh, a really fun video to make. I've wanted to talk about Attack on Titan for a while, but I kept pushing this video back because, uh, Attack on Titan is pretty dense, uh, as far as, uh, shonen, uh, plots and stuff go. So, like, you know, usually, like, I, I crap on Black Cl Clover and Naruto a lot, but, like, I just, those are always the ones I think of as, like, the, like, I would say, like, kind of, like, the most, like, basic, really popular still, though, shonen, and, like, those, you know, I can, like, watch through an arc, like, once or, like, twice and feel, like, ready to talk about it. Not as much with Attack on Titan, I had to do quite a bit more legwork here, but what I have to show off for my collection this week is, uh, my girlfriend went on a trip to, uh, Portland, Maine, or Portland, Oregon, for that matter, to quote my favorite film, The Shining. That was so dorky. Uh, <laughs> Nah, she went to Oregon, though. Uh, but what she picked me up there was this uh, Fragments of Horror by Junji Ito. Is this really cool, like, almost like, it almost looks like uh, it was drawn in with, like, pencil graphite on this cover. It is super neat, really fun to look at. I actually haven't gotten a chance to read it yet, but she has read a couple of them, kind of stole my present early, and very good so far, apparently. So, I'm really excited for this one. Uh, thank y'all so much for checking out that video. Ghost watch video will be out soon. Uh, yeah, have a good one, y'all. Bye.